You might notice that we don't often in the Ashtanga club sit in Varasana. If you have poorly knee syndrome, please just know that this is one way to help the knee. So the higher the bolster, the better. So I did have a knee problem many years ago. And this was in the days before Gokulam. We're in Saraswati Puram, uh, Lakshmi Puram. And after breakfast, we would all have nothing to do other than spend time at the pool. And at the pool, we swapped many stories. And often there was converted Iyengar students. Iyengar students were coming to practice Ashtanga Vinyasa Yoga with Patabi Joyce. But those Iyengar students had some really valuable stuff to share. And one of them was Varasana. Oh, and Sutta Varasana. <laughs> so when I had my poorly knee, the Iyengar practitioner asked me if I could do Varasana. And I couldn't do Varasana. So when I um, identified my own lack of Varasana and having a knee problem, I started to make sure I included it in my, what I call homework in those days, now I call it play work, in my playtime. And so I try and sit in Varasana as much as I can, and as Francesca says, also Supta Varasana. So you can just lie down. If you need to use a bolster, lie down. And so it's one of those things that you, if you identify that this is difficult and painful, write that in your journal, it's difficult and it's painful, and then put a big question beside it, why? And the first, the first part of the journey of finding out why, it might be because it's something you don't do very often. You hate it. <laughs> so, the quadriceps are the extenders of the legs. The hamstrings are the flexors of the legs. This posture is in the fourth series. So in the, in the fourth series of Ashtanga Vinyasa Yoga, the child's Virasana appears. So at first, at, so at my beginning stage of my practice, when I had poorly knee, um, I had no virasa, for Virasana, let alone this position. It wasn't until I was in um, Madrid, Spain, teaching a workshop, and my daughter was five and my son was three, and I, I, I have it in photographs of them, just family photographs, sitting in Bhadakonasana, sitting in Varasana. But I never specifically processed it, watched it, documented it. And it wasn't until I was seeing another child of 18 months that I saw what I call the baby sequence. And when I found, the, found this baby sequence of Bhada Konasana, Virasana, and half and half, you'll find this is easy if you take one leg out and put it into Janu. So take your right leg out, put it into Janu. So this is a, a half and half. You might find that your left hip raises off the floor, but you, we try and sit that left hip down. That's what we're trying to do in Terianga Mukha. So, but you can either have the lower leg lateral or the lower leg medial. So half and half is a really good um, homework pose or play pose. See if you can do one leg Janu uh, cat. 
Yeah, cool. Yeah. It's a nice awesome. modification for Yeah. And it's really easy to change sides. To change sides, I call it the wheels on the bus go round and round. You heard that song? And the windscreen wipers go swish, swish, swish. <laughs> yeah, do you want to try that? And the windscreen wipers go swish, swish, swish. And you swap sides. Ah, there we go. Cat, you love it. Fantastic. One way to get you to play. Yeah. Yeah. So you will find that one side is harder than the other side. And that was the, so this is my hard side. This is the, it's the I'm now doing your yeah. So this was my golfing side. This so whenever I do it in, in the class, I always ask you to do the right leg first because this is my easy side. This is my side where I really sit down. Yeah. And so you will find that there is one hip that is try. So just swip back and compare. There's one side that it's a little bit tipped up. Okay. And we've got to try and earth that that hip down. Yeah. So it's just a a little reflection of what I call a fundamental foundation and opening that we used to have as a child. Yeah. And so in my observations, generally speaking, and this is not being whatever it is, sexist or whatever, but generally speaking, boys sat more like this before they went off and crawled somewhere, and girls sat more like this. Girls tend to sit more like this. So when I discovered it, I then went, when I went home, I got my daughter to to sit in this Varasana. She was five and she was able to sit with her shins at 90 degrees. She had so much medial rotation in her femur. So this is about medial rotation, but the adult Varasana is about bringing the knee up to midline. So could you go back to Varasana? And so have a look at your knees. If the femur is still rolling in, it's not Virasana. Not an Iyengar Virasana. It was Mr. Iyengar that called this the head of the knee. And so you want the head of the knee to be flat, level. So you really have to squeeze those legs in to roll those thigh, thigh bones up the midline. Then you have a Teriyanga Mukha. That's a real Teriyanga Mukha, is a half Varasana. If you are sitting on a block for Varasana, then of course you're sitting on a block for Teriyanga Mukha. So if you use a block for Teriyanga Mukha, have a look to see what's happening to the knee. You, you want to get that knee the head of the knee flat. Because there's three of these in the second series. Three of them? Two of them. Kranchasana. Bharavadrasana. It's out at 45. Oh yeah, Supta, Bharavadrasana, and Paragasana. Yeah. 